membrane protein functions. So we talked before about how proteins are made out of amino acids and the order of amino acids is determined by DNA. And so if you have this long protein made out of amino acids, the amino acids, they have R groups on them and the R group here might interact with an R group with that one there. So this protein would actually end up folding in a very special way and it would have a very special shape. And so if you have a cell membrane, the lipid part is really just kind of there to prevent anything with anything watery really from moving in and out. The proteins are the ones with the special shapes and they ha can have a million different special functions whereas the lipids function is just pretty much to be hydrophobic. So here's one particular job. Um, it's structural support. So it's like the bones in your body or the the, um, the boards in the frame of a building or the, the iron in it, whatever the steel beams or something um, in a big building. It's just there to make this cell the right shape to hold it the right way. Recognition, this would be ID tags. So this is a special shape and um, maybe it says, hey, I belong to um, Johnny and um, I belong to Johnny's liver, for example. So it's an ID tag. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. Okay, communication, these are things like hormones. It's not coming up super clear. Or neurotransmitters. So this might be um, a nerve cell, and it might be sending out, well, another nerve, another thing over here might be a nerve cell, might be sending out these um, serotonin molecules, which are picked up by this hormone, and if they fit just right, then they'll um, communicate. And another one is transport, and so we already looked at these transport proteins. They'll let sodium in or out, or um, potassium, or whatever. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of these in a row. So structural support, cell communication would be things like hormone receptors and neurotransmitter receptors. Cell recognition would be an ID tag. Is this cell self or is it foreign? Human blood types are just an example of that. And then viral specificity, there are um, proteins that a virus could fit into um, on a cell. And if they're there, then it can infect the cell. And if they're not there, it can't. Okay, so we'll look at structural support first. Some membrane proteins provide structural support for the materials inside the cell. And so you just need the cell to be the right shape or whatever, and that's what this protein attached to this protein will do. Cell-to-cell -cell communication. Cells can communicate with each other even at a distance. So the cells in your body can send messages to each other. So your pancreas um, can send out insulin, and that can affect um, cells all over your whole body. So one is hormone receptors. So there's the pancreas. And you remember the pancreas, it sends out um, digestive enzymes into um, your small intestine. Another thing that it will do is actually make insulin. And so here's the insulin. So these are molecules. They're a type of, um, they're a protein actually. And so insulin is a hormone. And it goes out into your bloodstream. So insulin travels through the blood, like every hormone, and binds with any insulin receptor available. So it's in the blood now, and here's the thing. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> here's a liver cell membrane, and here's a receptor, and insulin actually affects the liver. It'll say, hey, liver, take in some glucose and change it into glycogen. Store it for a while, will you? That will get the um, glucose out of the blood, and we need it to go away. So see how the insulin fits right with that receptor? Well, that's what liver cells look like. If you look at, I don't know, skin cells, um, they don't have the right receptor. Their receptors are a different shape, and so insulin doesn't really fit into the skin one. So skin is not affected by insulin. We would say the liver is a target of insulin, and the skins would, skin cells would be not a target. Not a target organ or a target cell, because it's not affected by insulin. It's just it doesn't have the right receptors. So only certain cells have the receptor um, the receptor protein for insulin, so insulin affects only those cells. So lots of the receptors are found in the cell membrane. In fact, anytime you have a protein hormone, the receptor is going to be on the surface of the cell. If you have a hormone that is um, a steroid, it could actually go right through the cell membrane and the receptor can be inside the cell. Another example of communication that 
needs these proteins would be neurotransmitter receptors. So here's a nerve cell, and it's the very end of a nerve cell. And this might be a muscle cell, or it might be another nerve cell. And so what happens is that these things, they're called synaptic vesicles. They're just another transport vesicle. When they get the right signal, they do, what is this process where they fuse and spit their stuff out? Oh yeah, that's exo cytosis cytosis and so their neurotransmitters like serotonin for example come out here there's the little green dots and they're going to diffuse over so if you look at this let's take a close-up of it here's the serotonin the neurotransmitter and here's the receptor so this receptor is a protein and it's exactly the right shape for serotonin when serotonin binds then it allows sodium to go through so this protein is very special it's a receptor protein and it's a transport protein um, if you don't have serotonin on it, this thing closes up and it's not a transport protein. So a neurotransmitter is released by the neuron and diffuses to the receptor. So a neurotransmitter is released by the neuron and diffuses to the receptor. If it fits, it will change something about the receptor. In this case, when it fits, it opens it up and so sodium can come in. Remember, sodium is an ion, which is the electricity of the body. And as soon as that sodium is in here, now you have electricity moving. Um, you have ions moving, and that's the electricity of your body. It can say, hey, muscle cell, let's go, let's contract. Or, hey, nerve cell, time to fire. Another one is cell recognition. So, so far for proteins, we've talked about um, structural proteins, and we've talked about receptor proteins. Now we're going to talk about cell recognition, or ID tags. Cells recognize other cells by the proteins and or the carbohydrates on the plasma membrane. So these vary from species to species and even from individual to individual. So you and I will have some um, ID tags on us that say, hey, this is a human. But you'll have different ID tags in you than in me, which is why I can't just give you my blood or my liver. Well, I wouldn't give you my liver, but maybe one of my kidneys um, without checking to see if if they would um, be a good match. They also change from cell type to cell type within the same individual a little bit. So you'll have some receptor, some sorry, some recognition proteins that are on your um, your heart that wouldn't be on your liver, for example. So the more important thing though is self versus foreign. Your body did an inventory of its antigens, which means cell sur cell surface proteins and carbs before you were born. And actually, it looks at all of the kind of friendly antigens, maybe the bacteria that will be in your gut, that kind of thing. And now it can detect the difference between self-antigens and foreign antigens. Good guys, right? Don't fight yourself. Bad guys. So a foreign antigen would be on bacteria or viruses. So self-antigens are antigens on your cells. Your body should not attack these. So again, I want you to think of antigens as ID tags. You belong to me better not fight you. Foreign antigens, these are antigens on bacteria, viruses, worms, etc, etc. <clears throat> so other pathogens, things that cause diseases, and your body needs to fight these. And I have a video that I'll show you in class. Okay, so this is how your immune system protects you from pathogens um, or disease-causing organisms, and this is why people reject blood of the wrong type or organ donations that don't match. You'll get a kidney from someone else, and if it has foreign antigens, your body will attack it and um, reject it, and you, you won't have the kidney anymore. More videos. More videos. Okay. Let's look at human blood types as an example. These are determined by carbohydrates that are on the red blood cell surface. So there are four blood types. There's type A, type B, type AB, and type O. And let's say... These are the possible antigens of red blood, of the red blood cell membrane. So this is antigen A, and I'm just making this up, right? I don't really know what it looks like. And this one is antigen B. Okay, so you can see the antigen B looks a little bit different from antigen A. So if you have type A blood, here's your red blood cells. This one would have A antigen. It would have the A antigen, but it would have no B antigen. So that's somebody who has type A. If you're type B, then you're going to have no A antigen, but, oh man, but you will have the B antigen. i got to get this out of the way. If you're type AB, 
you will have both. So you'll have an A antigen, you'll have a B antigen. There's no such thing as an AB antigen. When someone's type AB blood, they have the A antigen and they have the B antigen. And if you're type O, guess what you have? No antigen A and no oops. No antigen A and no antigen B. So they are red blood cells without ID tags of this type. They might have other ID tags or antigens, but not the AB type. So if you're given blood of the wrong type, your body will reject it. It will have foreign antigens, or at least it might. And then the RH is just a whole other set. It's whether you have the RH factor or not, um, which I can talk about in class if you have questions on it. Okay, so we can do the genetics of that in another month or so, but for now I just want you to know what they look like. Viral specificity, last thing. Viruses will attack only certain cells while ignoring others because of membrane receptors. And so, for example, here's a smallpox virus. Oh, lovely. There's a smallpox. This is um, a membrane from a human cell. And do you notice how that fits in there just perfectly? It just so happens that frog cells do not have those receptors. And so smallpox can fit into your receptors, but there's no receptors um, on a frog. So frogs don't get smallpox. Lucky them. So that last one just doesn't fit. All right, so oops. So what's an antigen? You already saw the answer. A protein and or carbs that identify the cell as self. That is it. Why does insulin regulate liver cells but not skin cells? Liver cells do not have the right receptor. No, they actually do. Liver cells do not produce insulin. That's true, but we're talking about insulin affecting them, not being produced by them. Skin cells do not have the right receptor. That is it. And skin cells do not produce insulin. That's true, but not the answer. What is the target cell? It's a cell with the right receptor for the hormone. Actually, that one is it. Hormones are secreted into what? Target cells, receptor cells, blood, or small intestine. Hormones are secreted into the blood, just like everything else, pretty much. And then the blood is what moves it around to the target cells. Why do people reject blood of the wrong type or unmatched organ transplants? The blood or organ may have pathogens associated with it. The blood or organ may not be healthy enough for the body to keep. The body recognizes it as foreign and mounts an immune response to protect the body. That's it, the last one. And that's the end, folks. Happy day.